Hi, Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter, Second Swing Minnetonka. Here with fellow employee James Tracy, also a Master Club Fitter here, here to discuss the differences between the Callaway Apex 19 and Apex Pro 19. Yeah, in this video we'll try to take a peek and see how the two models compare in terms of the distance, the spin, you know, as a good player, Thomas, you know, your feedback in terms of what you like. I know that you've been really anxious to try the Apex Pro. I'm kind of waiting for that iron to come out here for a couple months. Um, so we'll see how that compares to your gamer and then you know, see if that Apex, kind of the standard model, intrigues you as a better player in terms of what it does uh, for performance. Yeah, I'm really excited to try the Apex Pro. It's, uh, it's been in the back of my mind the last couple of months. Um, I've been kind of in the market, played you know, the, my current irons for about a year, and then I just, I just been really int intrigued by it. I had the chance to hit it a couple of times without seeing the data, so I'm just really excited. So, yeah. Well, let's not wait any longer. Let's jump in and hit a few. There All right, Thomas, so what do we got? What are you holding there? What are we going to start testing with? So this is here? the new Callaway Apex Pro 19 hit. Okay. So we're going to hit a few shots with this, take a look at the numbers. Yep. Is that so the same shaft as your gamer too? It is. So this is the Project XLZ X125, so 6.5. Okay. So, yep. Awesome. Well, I know yep. you've been kind of chomping at the bit to hit this head. Yeah, so. and then anticipation of hitting this. Looks oh. pretty good so far, so Excellent. we'll see how it, how it reacts. Awesome. Yeah, let's fire a couple. All right. That felt really solid. Yeah, I, mean, I have a feeling we're going to hit a few solid strikes here in the next 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, you're playing 718 AP2s. How does that head, just first impressions in terms of just the shape and the size compare? Um, pretty similar. I, I've always liked the chrome look. So looking down at this, this is, this is uh, very shiny and, and chrome and yeah, really good looking head. Traditional. Yeah. Um, traditional. <laughs> Looks about the same size. That was a little more ball speed there. Now, I know most of our viewing audience has studied your game for the last decade, but for those that don't know, <laughs> do you tend to follow the ball left or to the right? It's a little bit, you, just a general draw. Okay. Yeah, last couple okay. years, I played a little bit of a little bit of right to left. Okay. Notice those last couple actually flew pretty straight. This head's measuring at 62.5 in terms of the lie angle. Is that, that's pretty similar to your gamer, isn't it? Yep, I have mine at pretty much, yes, yeah, same, same lie angle, standard. Okay. Pretty, I'm a pretty standard lie angle player, standard I've, length. I've found you to be pretty boring in the time <laughs> I've known you, so yeah, standard makes sense. Yep. Yeah, pretty good there, too. Pretty good there. In terms of the feel, you know, I know that you know being uh, more of a traditional iron player, you know, you're used to that forward <laughs> feel, kind of soft, that crunch. Yep. You know, how, do these feel hot? Do they feel like a distance iron, or do they feel more like you know, like? It doesn't feel expect? like a distance iron, but it definitely feels solid. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously forged, so I mean, it feels pretty pretty good off the club face. Okay. I'd say, just in first and initial impressions, and I've been peeking, looking at that ball speed every single time to see yeah. if it's jumped. It's jumped a little bit compared to mine, so. Yeah. Um, for the most part, you know, it feels pretty good, but it is coming off that club here just a little bit hotter. Yeah. But not to the point where it's going to go crazy, crazy long. Right. Uh, we got, and we loaded up some of your, kind of your typical numbers with your gamer. So we'll yep. pull those up a little bit later in the video and kind of do some comparison. But yeah, these numbers are a little fast for, for what we usually expect when you and I are testing iron. So yep. even with a smaller head, you're definitely seeing that speed. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Yep, so yeah, I'll fire one more and we'll get so the So far looking pretty good. Yeah, I, like, I like the look of it. Like I said, I've been anticipating hitting this for a while. Felt pretty good. My seven iron doesn't make that sound. That's different to me. All right, let me steal that head back from you there, Thomas. So what would you say overall first impressions? I like it a lot. How would you grade it? Yeah, I would... Uh, it's it's up there pretty close to ten out of ten to be okay. honest. It's lived up to the hype. It's I lived know. up to the hype. It's one of you know, yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of golfers are excited to test the Apex line. I mean, you know, obviously the CF16 stuff was so popular, yep. and Cali kind of waited to replace it just because it was so good. The reason why they took um, three years, right? Right. Yep. And on the same line, I mean, they 
people are going to hold this product to a pretty high standard because of you know Callaway's dominance in the marketplace, you know, how good their previous model was. Yep. So you know Callaway really does need to hit a home run with this one for sure. And you know if they do, they'll be well on their way to being number one in irons again. I would have to imagine. Okay, so we'll just change the tag here for okay. the TrackMan audience here. So this is kind of your standard Apex. First initial Amazing. impression, this is just a slightly bigger head, but looks still looks pretty good actually for a little bit more kind of game improvement iron. Yeah, you lose a little bit of that traditional kind of chroming yeah. look, right? It's more of a satin. It's more of a satin. It's actually pretty sleek actually. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, so still a seven iron, uh, same shaft, same yep. angle. So we'll kind of see how these two heads compare side by side. Sounds good. Felt real solid. And one of the things Cowie did with this set, you know, to cater to players like you who have a little bit more of an aesthetic preference in, in terms of size and shape, the eight, nine, and wedge are you know, fit in with the set a little bit better and yep. you know, kind of appeal to that better player's senses a little bit. So I do think you'll see more, you know, single digit and low, even, you know, close to scratch golfers that are craving a little more distance and pop will probably put a couple of these sets in play yeah. this year. Doesn't hurt. And now for me, I'm playing around with the idea of wanting to put four wedges back in my bag. Ah. So if I could find a club that maybe just went just a little bit longer than my current clubs, I wouldn't need to have to find that driving iron. That, that three iron, four iron is going to go pretty far, and then I can crew the bag, maybe right. get that extra wedge. Correct. Not have a hybrid, not have a driving iron, and actually mm -hmm. get down to that, that struggle of having 14 clubs in my bag. Yeah. Having to swap stuff out would be, be nice. Essentially, so. your distance gapping in that scenario, you know, if you're using a five iron where your old set was a four, I mean, even though the loft is a little bit different, you're using a club that's half and shorter, you know, five yep. iron instead of a four iron. So in terms of greens and regulation, confidence, working the ball, mm -hmm. there's some advantages to that idea for sure. I definitely agree. Yep. That was a little miss hit. He's human after all. Same distance though. I mean, Interesting. Look over on the left hand side. Same distance. Know. Well, it did change that the spin did drop just a little bit compared to the last one, but it went the yeah. same distance. Yeah, same spot. So that one I think I caught a little off the toe. It felt a little clunkier, but it still went the same distance, so that's good news. Very solid. That's pretty good. I feel like I haven't hit one really solid this one with this club yet. That might be it. That was more. That was solid. <laughs> now we a little off, little offline, uh, little misread from the yeah. uh, the indoor simulation. Like I said it was solid, but that spin yeah, rate at three like thousand. That's just yeah, a little bit inaccurate. Spin right there. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll just assume for a minute that you didn't hit that one thirty yards further. <laughs> Do a quick little delete there. Every once in a while in indoor testing, we'll miss one. Yeah, that was crazy. I know I hit it solid, but not 210 yards solid. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to inflate your ego, Thomas. <laughs> a little misleading. Felt solid too. Here you go, two in a row. That's yeah. more believable. That's more what I would have expected off that strike. Now one more for me there, sir. That way we got five with each. Yep. That felt solid as well. Those last two were pretty solid. So before we dive into some of the data, just from an experience standpoint, strike, look, how did that head compare to the Apex Pro? Anything surprise you there? It actually surprised me how much I liked it. I mean, I know it's, I know, yeah, it's like a little bit more in the game improvement category, but I was actually really surprised how much I, I liked it. It's you know, obviously got a little thicker top line, but it wasn't bad at all. I've definitely uh, hit worse game improvement irons, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> visually, it looks really good. No, visually, because I'm usually typical, typically playing an, an iron that you know, has a little thinner top line, has a little smaller compact head, 
Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, well, I think then, you know, it sounds like Cowie did a nice job of doing what they intended to do, which is, you know, make a, we would consider a mid-size iron appeal to a better player. And then for those players that need a little bit more forgiveness, we saw in your first three hits, you know, none of those were, you know, by your admission, a perfect strike, but they all <laughs> were going about exactly the same distance as your best strikes with the Apex Pro. And yep. they didn't really fluctuate too much. Yep. And then, you know, you got a little more determined. I saw a little more uh, determination to yep. strike it solid. And the last two were really, really perfect. And those mm -hmm. did hug each other really close, you yep. know, on the downrange performance. So Yeah, the first three I didn't quite catch as well as I would have liked, but then all of a sudden I was like, well, I was determined to make sure I actually put a couple good swings on it. And yeah, that was so, you know, if we jump over onto the TrackMan screen for a comparison, you know, we've thrown in a, a, a third color, this white pattern, that's Thomas's Gamer. So that's a 718 AP2, again, with the same shaft, Project XLZ 6.5, right, Thomas? Yep, um, correct. Yep. And then both, all three irons were playing at the same lie angle. Yep. Um, but then the loft structure, that's kind of inherent to their factory loft. So the AP2 and the Apex Pro, a little weaker in loft versus the standard Apex. Yep. Um, so a couple things that jump out, you know, certainly... You know, both models from Callaway, Apex Pro being the yellow pattern here, and then the standard Apex 19 in the purple, definitely you were seeing that, um, that added distance over your, over your gamer, which we kind of anticipated that. Mm -hmm. You could even feel, you know, you saw the ball speed numbers jumping up a little yep. bit. So, um, you know, in just looking at the pattern, anything surprise you there, Thomas, uh, in terms of what you normally see? How straight overall the uh, Apex was. Yeah. So we can see how you know, kind of like north to south, how how straight that this this one here is compared to the other two. They were kind of a little bit more kind of east to west, a little bit larger dispersion. So yeah. that, that stood out to me right away. Yeah, a little larger club yep. head, a little more perimeter weighting. You know, certainly on your off center hits, they didn't really get away from your right or left. Yep. You know, so I think that some of that has to do with, you know, how better players like an iron that, you know, curves the ball. You know, there's a little more workability yep. in the smaller heads. And if you're miss hitting the ball, sometimes you get that added curve without the intent. Yep. It's that larger head. You definitely saw a little straighter flight as a result. Mm -hmm. You know, jumping into some of the numbers, you know, your club head speed is right around 90 with all three, which makes yep. sense. That's that's normal Thomas numbers there. Ball speed did jump with both models. Um, you know, deviation wise, actually saw the best consistency of the ball speed with the Apex Pro. Yep. Only deviating by one mile per hour, whereas the uh, your gamer and the standard Apex. A little more deviation, but still, you know, really, 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 really low. Um, yeah. You know, at 1.7 and 1.6. So sometimes you can credit that to the, you know, fully forged head. You know, it's going to reward a really good ball striker in terms of consistency of the data when you're striking it well. Um, but we saw, you know, almost two miles per hour um, difference between the two Callaway models, which I think we could probably say we can anticipate that. Right? That smash factor number with the both Apex Pro and Apex. 1.42 with seven nine is pretty good. Yeah, mine I'd was say, one, yeah, that's efficient. Mine was 139, so a little bit higher, so that's a little more efficient, so that's interesting. I think the bigger difference here, which, which you know, I think is, has a lot to do with, you know, the advent of some of these kind of distance irons or these, these tour models that are creating some of that speed. You know, sometimes players are worried about the stronger lofts and the lower spin and what that yep. might do to, you know, that's, hey, that's the only reason they're going further, but... You know, look at the flight difference between these ones in terms of the trajectory. Your gamer right around 110 feet, 108 yep. on average, seeing tremendous, you know, improvement in terms of peak trajectory. Apex yeah, Pro 119, and then the standard Apex, even though it's got stronger loft, you are getting a higher Apex there at 121, mm -hmm. and both were achieving that window a little bit more efficient, or a little more consistently than your than your Titleist. Yeah, definitely notice on top of that is the spin rate dropped a little bit with the. Uh, Apex and Apex Pro versus mine. So because yeah. the ball was flying a little bit higher, you can get away with it spinning just a little bit less too because it's going to come and land a little, exactly. little bit steeper under the green for me as exactly. well. Exactly. So and, you know, that, that number right here, landing angle, about two degrees steeper in terms of, um, you know, its descent into the green. So even though, you know, if you're looking just at spin, yeah, you know, those both those irons scrub the spin a little bit. And yep. in my opinion, 6,000 is plenty for a 7 iron, especially for how high you hit it and how solid you hit it. You yep. know, you play a little bit of a draw. So that it's leads to a little lower a little bit spin lower. Yep. rates, but you know, 6,000 falling from 120 feet, you know, that's going to still give you pretty good stopping power. So, yeah. you know, that lower spin ball speeds, you know, certainly adding to the distance. And if we scroll across a little bit, you know, you added the ball speed, a little less spin, a little higher peak trajectory. You know, there's an even 10 yards of in, uh, distance uh, in terms of carry over yep. your gamer without really a noticeable change in deviation. You know, your gamer was 
by a slight margin, a little more consistent in terms of the distance control. Yep. It could be just a small sample size, but um, you know, certainly, like you mentioned at the beginning of the fitting, um, you know, you're using almost, in terms of the apex, almost one less club. You know, so you go to an mm -hmm. iron that's a half inch shorter, you know, from that same yardage. You know, I yep. think some of those deviations get a little bit better. As I would agree from yep. the same distance. We're talking like half, half a yard. We're talking, talking half yards. Yeah, we're not yeah. talking like <laughs> a big, big amount. So <laughs> very true. Yeah. Anything else jump out at you in terms of the data? I mean, like I mentioned earlier about wanting to maybe try and get in four wedges back in my bag by just picking up a little bit of distance over, over my current club. That's, that's half a club right there. 173 carry versus 179 with the Apex Pro. It's 10 yard difference between the mine and the, ape and the standard Apex head. So like, as I mentioned, probably as we go through the bag, that four or three irons naturally is just gonna go further as well. So, I mean, that really stood out to me, the fact that I wanted to pick up just a little bit of distance. In terms of, you know, coming into this testing, you maybe had an idea of, you know, hey, if I was gonna build a Apex set, here was the makeup I was thinking about coming in just based on head size and what I like and what I've played, you know, based on this testing, what we saw in the seven irons, what do you, what would you say for your game would create a perfect combination? Would you combine any of the, uh, the, the the standard apex versus the pros. It's just actually stay all the way intriguing through? now that we've that I actually really kind of liked hitting the apex. So even like a three or four iron five iron combo wouldn't be. Would I'm not huge fan on combo sets, but it's actually you know it's intriguing now the idea because knowing this I could play with a three iron apex as a as my kind of driving <laughs> iron, yep. and then kind of tra transition through with apex pro with the more club that I little smaller head that I like to look down at at the same time, so that, that stands out to me. So Awesome. All right, James, so we managed to take a look at some data here between the uh, Callaway Apex, K Apex Pro, and then also my current irons. What was the in first initial reaction you saw from all the data? Well, again, watching you hit hundreds, if not thousands, of golf balls a year, I kind of know what you like. I know what your golf ball tends to do. I uh, wasn't surprised at seeing the added ball speed with both models. I thought that the biggest takeaway for me was just how well the standard Apex model performed. I know when we've hit kind of mid-size irons, even the distance iron, you tend not to like the feel. Yep. You tend to see big jumps in distance. And then certainly your dispersion doesn't usually tighten up like that. If anything, you usually hit a tighter dispersion with a smaller head. So yep. I thought that was uh, kind of an interesting stat. And then again, I thought that seeing the peak trajectory improve as much as it did in terms of the apex and how that influenced landing angle. Um, I wasn't surprised at your robotic spin rates. I mean, the <laughs> 6,600 with your gamer to 63 to 6,000, I mean, pretty sure that's what robot testing would <laughs> usually lead to. So I yeah. kind of chuckled when we saw that, but I think that just kind of speaks to the technology and, and those are things that um, are kind of predictable, but certainly in every fitting scenario, uh, you're gonna see some changes. So, you know, obviously anybody who's interested in the Callaway iron should definitely uh, come by to get fit and to uh, kind of go through a similar experience that you just did. I definitely agree when it comes to the spin rate. I was a little worried with the Apex whether it was going to spin less, but it really you know, it was only 300 less than the Apex Pro, and only the Apex Pro was only 300 less than mine. Yeah. But because I was hitting the ball higher, the ball was going to come in and stop just as quick anyway, so that makes up for it. And spin, spin 6,000 on the 7 iron is actually not that, that bad at all. So that was the first take I got, had right there, and at a distance because the ball was spinning just a little bit less as well. Uh, I'd say overall the Apex really stood out to me as potentially even playing that in my three or four iron as kind of like a, as a driving iron and then transition through to a combo set all the way through with the Apex Pro. So really, really good stuff. Yeah, well you heard it from the robot, you know, definitely some intrigue. Cowie's got a big, uh, big shoes to fill with their original, you know, 16 um, Apex model. Early impressions look really good. If you have any more questions, feel free to jump on secondswing.com. Check out some of our other videos, and then if you're close to one of our stores, come and see Thomas, myself, or one of the other great Second Swing employees, and we'd love to show you our new irons. Thanks for watching.